Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to a very special video, an original tag uh, that I created as a celebration. Because some of you might know, if you are on Twitter, uh, our very own Jacqueline from Six Minutes For Me, who is a lawyer, originally from Australia, but now living in Texas, last week just passed the Texas bar exam, which is one of the toughest in the country. So congratulations, Jacqueline. And I thought, what better way to celebrate this by creating an original tag for Jacqueline, but of course, also for all of us. I came up with some questions that are law related and I think Jacqueline will recognize one or the other from the Texas bar exam and transform them into book questions because this is booked you after all. So I hope you like that Jacqueline and again congratulations and without further ado here are the questions. Oh and the tag is called the burden of proof tag or also known as the Jacqueline Booktube bar exam tag. Anyway, question number one, and I, of course, even though I invented the question, I have to look at my phone because I can't remember a thing early in the morning, especially. Anyway, question number one, billable hours. Um, as you might know, uh, Jacqueline's channel is called Six Minutes For Me, and six minutes is the unit that most of the law firms uh, write their time on their time uh, sheets. So if you work on a case, you have to uh, write down the time you spend on the case and mostly in units of six or five minutes so that in the end, the firm can bill the client for the time spent. And Jacqueline um, thought she wanted six minutes for herself and that's why she called her channel six minutes for me as an explanation and the book related question is a book in which money plays an important role you can interpret that any way you want um, whether it's a lack of money or whether it's because people have a lot of money or because they love money whatever uh, I chose uh, Lionel Shriver's 2016 novel The Mandibles um, it's about, um, it's a dystopian novel, um, um, and the premise is that the monetary economic system in the U.S. completely breaks down, and what implications that have, has for one family in particular, the Mandibles, who have to deal with the fact that their money isn't worth anything anymore. So, it's it's uh, the money plays an important role even though it's not there anymore. Question number two: Pacta sunt servanda, uh, which means contracts have to be kept or agreements have to be kept. That is one of the oldest rule uh, of contract law uh, that you have to keep uh, your promises, your obligation. It has been established way back in the Roman time, and it's part of most. Uh, modern legal systems, I would say. Uh, and the book-related question is a modern classic with a legal twist uh, that you think sh everybody should read. Um, and of course, you know me, what better pick than um, uh, Harper Lee's book To Kill a Mockingbird, published in 1960. One of the most famous lawyers features in this book, Atticus Finch, in a small town in Alabama uh, in the 1930s. Um, he is the village lawyer, well respected, and he has to uh, defend um, a young black man who is accused of raping a white uh, woman. Um, the man is innocent, but Atticus Finch knows that given the racist surroundings, he will he will be convicted anyway. So the book is told from the perspective of Scout, um, the young daughter of Atticus Finch, and it's about their life, but also about the trial. And it's, I think, a classic. I make all my students um, read it, uh, and I think everybody should read it. Question number three, uh, construction law. I don't know whether you know that, but Jacqueline's field of expertise is construction law. A field in the law I have no idea of. It, it sounds really fascinating, but also very complicated. And the book-related question is a book that dazzled you with its complex structure. 
Um, and I, ch you again, you can uh, interpret that any way you want. You can also choose a book that features uh, a building, for instance, as a, comp a complex structure. But I go with the structure of the book itself, and I chose Siri Hüstvedt's novel, uh, The Blazing World, which was published in 2014. It's a book about um, an artist, a female artist, Harriet, who after the death of her husband, when she is in her... Uh, mid to late 50s uh, decides to make art herself uh, but she doesn't feature the art um, or she doesn't feature herself as the artist but she takes uh, male artists as a front so she presents the art as if it had been made by that male artist and the book um, is written when Harriet is already dead and it features um diary entries and notebook entries from Harriet, but also interviews with uh, various people who knew Harriet, um, uh, artists, some of the artists who uh, acted as a front. It goes back and, in, and forth in time and in the end, you as the reader um, can make up your own mind about what really happens. But the structure is quite complex because of these various points of views and various uh, pieces of evidence, so to speak. Um, and so I, I really love the book, uh, but it definitely has a complex uh, structure. Question number four, the Franklin, Franklin Rule of Evidence. I'm no expert, not at all, in, um, in American law, but this rule featured in the 2019 uh, Texas bar exam. I, I checked it, and it's a rule of evidence in criminal law about hearsay, whether or not you can include hearsay in your evidence. And the book-related question is a book with an unreliable narrator. And I chose um, a book that I really love that I read a couple of years ago, Tiffany D. Jackson, Allegedly, published in 2017. Um, it's a book about a young woman, um, a teenager, who is incarcerated because she supposedly, allegedly, killed um, a, a, a little um, baby uh, who she was babysitting for. And the book tells the story of what really happens or does it? Because our narrator is definitely unreliable. Question number five, Roe v. Wade. I think I don't have to explain that. It's the 1973 landmark decision of the Supreme Court about abortion. And the book-related question is a book with a strong female character. And I chose Rachel Kaddish's novel, The Weight of Ink, published in 2017. It's an historical novel featuring not one, but two strong female characters. One in the present, who is a professor um, uh, who finds um, a Hebrew uh, writing hidden in the wall somewhere in a, in a building, and she has to translate it and also um, examine and come up with um, the, the author of this writing. And all the way back uh, in hundreds of centuries ago, um, the other historical timeline features a young woman, a Jewish woman, Esther, who works for a rabbi. And these stories intertwine, and both women are strong characters in their time. I love the book. If you are into that kind of historical fiction with two timelines, I can certainly recommend it. Question number six, grand jury. Um, you, if you're familiar with the U.S. law uh, or watch crime uh, thrillers on television, you might know a grand jury is a jury of people uh, who, in a uh, not public um, uh, hearing, decide whether the uh, present whether the evidence presented by the district attorney is enough to open um, a case, a trial. I'm sure, Jacqueline, I didn't explain that very well. But that's what you got. And the book-related question is a book with a grand, quote-unquote, set of characters. And again, you can interpret this either as one character who is grandiose or the way I interpreted a book that features multiple characters, a, a set of characters. And I chose Becky Chambers' book, A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, uh, published in 2014. 
This is a sci-fi novel um, set on a spaceship, um, and the crew uh, it has not only multiple characters, but it features a human, human, humans and non-human uh, aliens, and they all have to work together on this crew, and they all have their particularities and their background and their history. Um, and it's just uh, a wonderful book, uh, character-driven, um, uh, about a space journey to a small angry planet where they have to do some construction work. So construction work is in there too, which uh, I think Jacqueline will like. Um, but it, it just features um, a multitude of really, really well-drawn characters. Question number seven, malpractice, which is the, you know, uh, negligence of a professional, somebody who doesn't do what he is supposed to do. And the book-related question is a book with uh, you loved that features an unlikable character. And if you're following my channel, you might not be surprised by my choice. It's Hanya Yanagihara's uh, 2013, yes, 2013 novel, uh, The People of The People in the Trees. Um, the book is set in the 1950s, and we follow um, a young scientist who accompanies um, a big shot scientist, an anthropologist, um, to uh, a research mis mission onto a Micron Micronesian, Micronesian, my God, it's really too early and I didn't have enough coffee, a Micronesian island um, where the population has obviously some kind of... Um, medicine or something um, that uh, keeps them from dying. Uh, the book is, it's one of the most unlikable characters I've ever read because th this um, professor who uh, is the, the main character in the book, he is really horrible and there is child abuse and um, pedophilia and it, it's... It, really horrible, but the book is fantastic. So even though the character is so unlikable and such a horrible person, I love the book. Those were the seven sort of law-related questions, but I have two bonus questions that um, draw from more personal aspects of Jacqueline's life. I'm not going to go into detail. If she wants to tell you, she will. Um, but the first question is a South African author you love. And I chose uh, uh, Lauren Bocas, a contemporary uh, South African author who writes these really gothic -y, um, eerie kind of stories with with sometimes a magical realism twist, but they are just, ugh, they make you shiver. I, I, I love them, especially Broken Monsters uh, is one of my favorites. I will leave a link to uh, Lauren Berger's uh, Goodreads page down below so you can check her out. And the second bonus question is a book about an animals in an unusual setting. Spiders. I'm just saying spiders. But again, Jacqueline will decide whether she will share the story with you or not. Uh, but a book with uh, animals in an unusual setting for me is Karen Joy Fowler's We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves, uh, 2013 also. Uh, it's a book about a family, um, um, a, a young girl and her brother, but there's also a third member of the family um, that is kind of unusual. And that's all I'm going to say. I, I, it's, I, it's a fantastic book. If you've never heard of it, please check it out. And then, of course, uh, the Partners in Crime. You have to tag some people, fellow booktubers, to do this tag in order to celebrate Jacqueline's passing of the Texas exam. And I tag Jacqueline, of course, uh, Steve from Steve Donahue, because you can't make a tag and not tag Steve. Uh, Sean from Sean the Book Maniac because his wonderful video, uh, the tag he did for Eric from uh, Eric the Lonesome Reader for his 40th birthday inspired me to do this tag. Uh, I tagged Doris from all the books and Robert from Bader Hortz and Kendra from Kendra Winchester because those three um, also Southern um, American, I mean, not South American, but in the South of America living booktubers. And I think they all uh, are friends with um, Jacqueline and they knew about the that, that Jacqueline took the Texas bar. So this was it for the 
uh, Jacqueline booked you bar exam tag, the burden of proof tag. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, Jacqueline, and I hope you've enjoyed it, my viewers. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm looking forward uh, to your comments down below, and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.